the uh, touching between uh, John and Will, I think. Okay, all right, there you go. Okay, I'm sure it wasn't too intentional, but maybe you just get close enough that you try and get the advantage and you're touching and doing over 100 kilometres an hour, in fact, closer to 100 mile per hour indeed. Which uh, seems to get as close to the other being uh, two four strokes, listen out for them. And uh, that is uh, Blaze, of course, out there, and also with uh, Regan. Uh, Regan is on the uh, IMD bike, so uh, good call for uh, Regan. Regan, of course, a 24 year old accountant from Tauranga, who's a former Victoria Motorcycle Club scholarship recipient, enjoys racing and surfing. I love that if you live in Tauranga. Why not? It's the uh, at Yamaha uh, uh, R3 he rides as well, courtesy of Red Bear and Biggles Race Team, Inter Island, Night Train Suspension, and uh, Prally Tires. But in this case, it's the IMD. This is a 125 GP uh, Moto uh, 3 bike. It has uh, what they call a KPR frame, and it's powered by a, a 2013 KDM 250 SXF engine. And the other uh, four stroke that's out there is the uh, uh, effectively similar to the CRF, but it uh, actually is a special uh, 250 road race engine. Although, uh, of course, you think of the single cylinder, the, a similar kind of engine to what Honda use on their fabulous uh, CRF uh, 250 as well. So, still single cylinder 250 four stroke uh, engines. Great machines. And uh, Spider, Zanagate gone, Daniel Jenkins gone. They were two riders that we were interviewing last time, so we lost the cream out of the crop. Yeah, a bit of a disappointment. I did see Zane Gate walk from the ambulance into the uh, medical room, so uh, okay enough, but, uh, right now we're getting a snapshot of what goes on around the track. Right here in uh, turn two, a 90 kilometre an hour apex speed. We go into the Casper corner there, 80 kilometre apex speed. This is off the data that Chris Kane, who's lying in third place, got. So maybe a few k's different between, but tell you what, he's in the podium thing, so 80 k's an hour, 80 x we go down to that straight, as we see Chris Kane coming in and reeling in that four stroke, and going into second place there, Neil Ritchie pointed that out, 83, Reagan Foods then pushed back to third, the apex speed of this corner, the John Jones Steel corner, 118 kilometres an hour, they disappear out of sight, but we can see it on CTAS, alive there with their beautiful screen they've provided for us, next corner, 140 kilometres an hour, then they slow down to 115 kilometres an hour, 87 kilometres an hour. That's the third or fourth of the left-handers in a row there, heading up towards the hairpin. 63 kilometres an hour apex speed. This is faster than superbikes at the apex. Don't have something for turn nine, but we come across to the bus stop. It's 140 k's an hour top speed into the bus stop. The apex of this corner, the uh, right-hander, 116 kilometres an hour. They flip flop onto the front stop. 150 kilometres an hour they're doing there. What acceleration, 108 k's an hour at the apex. Thank you, Chris Kane, for that snapshot of a lap. Top speed, 195 kilometres an hour down the back straight. All right, throwing uh, Matthew Hugenboos and right on the spot here. Uh, Matthew, you, you know how you ride amongst uh, these guys and you've been in amongst them with their company. How do you feel you would uh, rate amongst them right, right here, right now? Come on, be honest. Uh, I don't know how to say it. Um, I've been uh, off racing for a wee while and um, uh, the rate that these guys are going at the moment, I mean, uh, a 110 from Zane Gate I uh, heard from yesterday. Uh, I'm astounded. <laughs> I don't think I ever went that fast. Um, maybe not a one uh, elevens, but no, not a 110. Well, there you go. So uh, you're hearing it right. Here's the man himself, and that's part of the reason why I wanted to throw him on the spot. He knows exactly about the times. So there you go, Matthew. And when, I'll tell you what, when he was winning 125 racing, he was storming to the front. He was winning uh, races by uh, massive margins at times as well. In fact, it was somebody as good as Matthew that took the limelight off the class because he just made it look so easy. But uh, here we are with these four strokes. And uh, Matthew, that, that honest question, are you two-stroke or four-stroke? If somebody offered you uh, Blazer's bike, would you say, no, I'll turn that down. I want to go on a two-stroke. Um, what's the four stroke? If someone did offer me that, I would absolutely love to try that. Well, there you go. Honest, honest answer, but you've enjoyed your 125, and I'm sure it was uh, a little bit more. Is it home in the shed just waiting for the right opportunity? <laughs> it's still tucked away. Um, I, don't, I can't remember if it was um, getting re a little bit of a rebuild on it, but um, it's going to be getting its maintenance done. Good right, an opportunity to ride these uh, 125s and uh, so many other good events to it. If you were to say you were riding 125, what's your favourite circuit in the country to be on with a 125? You might have a different idea on a bigger bike or a back of a little bit on a 125. What's your favourite? Definitely in Chicago at Tierra Oh, that, okay. That track was quite ideally made for the 125s. Maybe not so much on the last corner, but throughout the whole rest, 90% of the track, just 
unbelievably uh, awesome for the 125. There's so much more grip out there than any of the tracks in New Zealand. Well, there you go. Thank you. Nice, honest answer. And good to see from uh, Matthew. So uh, we're not there this year, of course, as we were last year, but we weren't here at level. So a little bit of toing and froing. And maybe it's time to bring back all these three South Island tracks, as there is also, of course, three in the North Island as well. So uh, could be an opportunity. There's the advantage. There's the Giga flag. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, look at that. Chris has got him. Chris Kane coming home on Regan Fitz. Great to see. So there you go, Chris Kane. He overtook uh, a little bit uh, further back in the race. And when I saw him get back there, I thought, oh, no, Regan will have him back again. But uh, Chris Kane, what an exciting race. And just because we had lost Daniel and uh, Zane doesn't mean to say that we've lost anything of the uh, good calibre of racing because that was right down the wire. And there was the example of the two-stroke to four-stroke, uh, Matthew. Did you feel any place on this track where the four-stroke may be a, a real advantage? Or where do you think the 125 that you've been used to piloting is into its own compared to the four-stroke? Well, it's hard to say without uh, running a four-stroke 125, but um, I'd like to say, you know, with, with the four-stroke, you do have a lot of mid-range um, going into corners, coming, oh, sorry, coming out of corners, actually. And with a 125, you really need to be on those power bands and really drive out of those corners. And um, Steve Ward and the whole team around Steden, who I um, was with, you know, they taught me a lot. Yeah, certainly a 125, certainly the way to learn racing. It's almost as if you think that uh, for everybody to be a great racer in bigger classes, you've got to go through a 125 to get there? It is a step up from the, uh, going from a 150 junior class. You know, like I, back in the day, it was a class called Street Stock. <laughs> Not right. many people like that name. <laughs> but um, it certainly brings back memories of the name Street Stock because um, that was where me and my brothers all grew up from and James uh, grew up on the one, uh, Pro Twins.